Well, it appears that companies are scrambling as the backlash against the woke nonsense that has taken over our country by storm seems to uh, be going in the right direction. We have our guest today, which is Mary Morgan. She'll be on the show later in just a few moments. It's approximately 8 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. Sorry that we're live streaming a little bit earlier. It's nightly offensive. Let's get down. All right. I'm just cutting that off there. Mary Morgan, Mary Archived. You can find her on uh, Twitter. She is the host uh, at Timcast Media of a show about pop culture and everything that's involved in it. And somebody who's also equally as white as me, which is absolutely amazing. Welcome to a slightly... It looks like I'm whiter than you right now. I know. Yeah. Hello. Happy to be here. Oh, thanks for the confetti. By the way, I think... Are you able to hear me right? Yeah, I think I'm getting feedback, though, in your in your mic a little bit. Like, I can hear myself oh, okay. playing. So you might have to put on the headphones. Okay. It is possible. It is possible. I'll, I'll put them on. Okay. Yeah. I do like my, yeah. my voice in the, like in, the, in, the, in the background, but we got it. And, uh, and so, first of all, I'd like to say this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we corrected it. We fixed it. We fixed it. Okay, you hear me? You hear yes. me now? Yeah. Are, am I okay, getting a, a delay, by the way, or can you hear me in real time? No, you're good. You're good. Okay, solid. Well, first okay. of all, then that was a rough start, but we'll just watch. We'll just pretend. Ready? All right. Cool. We're here with Mary Morgan. This is absolutely awesome. Welcome to the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what do you do at TimCast? You got a new show going on. It's already received some controversy. I've been following it, but I'm excited. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, so I got hired at TimCast about a year ago. I joined a show called Pop Culture Crisis. We talk about the entertainment industry. We dunk on celebrities. We review movies. Um, it's less political, more just fun, lighthearted stuff. And recently I've been appearing on some other podcasts, which has caused some controversies, as you said. Um, I went on Whatever, which has uh, been fun, but also uh, makes a lot of people angry when uh, you don't have the takes that they want you to have. Yeah, well, well, it does make people angry. And I bring this up today because um, people obviously realize that we're streaming at a different time. So we'll probably have a, a different viewership and yeah. you guys will watch later and get confused. And we're actually competing um, with nobody. We're just going at this time because I have to go to my sister's wedding after this. But celebration, Mary, celebration. Today, uh, we were basically waiting to find out if we were going to be remonetized for a third time. And I'm going to let you guess. Do you think that they put this channel back in good standing, removed the shadow ban, and remonetized it? What do you think? Uh, I'm guessing not, but I want to hear the story. Why did this happen? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. So they definitely did not remonetize it. So what's crazy is, is that this channel got demonetized, um, in January of 2021 on January 7th, when activists called YouTube and they made these articles okay. saying that, that they were, uh, putting AdSense on a domestic terrorist's page, which was me apparently. And, uh, luckily for YouTube, even after I lost my Facebook, my Instagram, everything, I got everything back because it turned out. You're still allowed to be a reporter in the modern era. And, uh, and I, was, I had a credential. And, but they said, look, we're not going to return your, your monetization. You're going to have to reapply within like six months. we got to let you know, the heat die down. We, know you, you, we, we didn't demonetize you for any reason. It was called for covering sensitive topics, but we'll give it back. And then we reapplied, and they said that we were, full of, uh, we were a channel that harassed the LGBTQ community. Um, and then we reapplied again and they said that we are a hateful channel. So I feel like we're just like, we're like, we're like getting the points. You know what I mean? Like we're hitting all the boxes and they're just making new reasons up. I just doubt that this channel will ever get back in good standing because I feel like if they don't want you to have monetization and they don't want you to be in good standing, then they just won't let you. As we saw with Sargon, the Lotus Eaters, just getting demonetized because he shows up in the show. Right. They'll, they'll eventually just demonetize you because you have the wrong person on the show. But we don't give we don't care. We don't care because we're having fun. Sounds like your YouTube channel is like hanging by a thread right now. Are you worried about getting deplatformed for good? Uh, no, I don't care because I I I, uh, I this is like I don't make I haven't made money on YouTube in three years. So 
I'm not really concerned. I have like a lot of other avenues and ways that I that I bring in income. So it's not a really a big deal. And I got millions of followers across the page. But you have a new show. And it's, is it monetized, by the way? Yeah, we go live every Monday through Friday. We get super chats. Mm-hmm. And it's working out pretty well for you? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's still a relatively new show. We just got to like 61K on YouTube, which was something to celebrate. Um, and we kind of have this little audience aside from Timcast that just likes to have fun instead of like getting bogged down in the news all of the time, getting black pilled about Ukraine and talking about DeSantis and all of that stuff. Uh, we just have our own little like micro subculture here at Timcast, which I like. Yeah, some people. I mean, I've been there. It's pretty cool. I, it was. It was a lot. It's a lot better now than with that one house, the the one previously where there was the cats. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night. I slept in like in a room with red lights, and a cat walked on me. And I was my alarm clock was Tim <laughs> recording his morning show. Hey everyone, good morning. How long ago me. was that? Okay, I've been. I don't know. That's got to be like three, four years ago. That yeah, it's got to be a. That's got to be a. <laughs> yeah. While ago. Yeah, I guess we've upgraded a lot since then. Oh yeah, you got a you got a McMansion. It is it is a pretty nice place. There's a skate park, everything. I mean, it's a pretty cool spot. Mm-hmm. Are you living there, or do you live nearby? I just live nearby. I don't think I could handle the chaos of living here, but there are employees who who do live here. Um, but it's it's we have like new guests coming in literally every day and sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, I just I'm too much of an introvert. I couldn't handle it. Yeah, no, of course. Well, we're going to talk about this. So, guys, we got to get into the culture war. We've got to talk about what's actually going on, because if you don't know, uh, we actually have a fight that's happening at Target at Bud Light, at Disney, and I think we might just be winning. So we're going to get into these stories that are going on in the Matrix. Let's discuss the insanity. Ah, it's a war on the woke. It's so scary. It's so scary. We can't give dildos to kids. It's makes me sad it really does because i'm a new father uh i'm a new father and i was thinking about you know making sure like i'm out here my son gets good health care it's a safe environment and of course as a parent the next thing i want my kids to have access to is tucking underwear from target dildos and themes adult themes right because this is the kind of stuff that we should be be targeting our children with right mary i mean this this is this is the crux didn't they try to debunk that and say that the tucking underwear, the tucking swimsuits were for adults and they didn't have those for children? Oh, good. I, good, I certainly good. hope so. Well, that's good. Okay, good. No, no. The, the, the point was, was that they had in the similar section and they had a onesie okay. that was promoting trans ideology and it was promoting it. And then right next to it, they had trans bathing suits that had tucking departments so or tucking compartments. Yes. They had like pride onesies and they had uh, shirts that say trans people will never stop existing, which is funny. They like every time that they get criticism online, they're like, you're denying my existence. And I never even understood where they were coming from with that. Uh, Like we know that trans people exist. We just don't want them talking to our kids. (laughs) Well, they're they're Well, that's the problem is that the problem is inherently that they're trying to make this like it's a protected class of people and not a mental illness. Like, I don't want someone that's suicidal and the potential to harm themselves giving advice on lifestyle to minors. We've never allowed people with a high potential towards violence, a high proclivity towards sexual degeneracy to be exposing themselves to kids, both literally or figuratively, until now. And we know why, right? I mean, we know we know why because of of you know the HRC Foundation, and we know the ESG scores. And these companies need money, and they need to be able to trade and buy internationally. So they have to put so much woke bullshit into their 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 agenda in order to retain their ability to to buy, sell, and trade. But I don't see how this could work long term in a country like the U.S., where half the population is conservative. I it's hard for me to have a take on this that's not blackpilling because uh, 
I, I saw Lauren Southern talking about this earlier today. She basically was like, we can start fighting this when we accept that get woke, go broke isn't the reality of the situation because they will get bailed out. Uh, ESG is part of that. And it's something that f so few people understand the, the breadth of. But like, yeah, if get woke, go broke were the reality of the situation, they wouldn't keep going with this. They're too big to fail and we know it. And niche boycotts don't have any power to stop it. And that sounds uh, disempowering and it, it makes people feel backed into a corner and helpless. Um, but I guess that's just the price that we pay for being aware of what they're pushing on us. I, I think the only successful boycott that's come from conservatives so far is Bud Light. Um, and most of the consumers that are seeing this new product line from Target, they're not extreme on either end. They're not all of the radical LGBT activists, but they're also not representative of any of us. They're either mildly skeptical of what's going on, or they just tepidly support the general idea of tolerance and LGBT acceptance. So what are they going to think? Yeah. And, and I do, I do agree with you because even when you look at this article, right, that Target is removing certain LGBTQ and Pride Month merchandise from its stores after an intense backlash from some customers, including violent confrontations with its workers, I'm pretty sure when you actually click on this, that they deleted the article. I might be wrong. Yeah. Oh. So. Wow. So I believe they actually deleted <laughs> the article. However, uh, you guys do know that you, of course, can support at ElijahSchafer.Locals.com and join the community. And you guys can get your memes. You have your, your exclusive chat. But one thing that I've really enjoyed about you guys on Locals is your ability to provide context. One of you is actually a worker at Target and explained how they moved the pride section. This is exclusive to the show. Um. This is a target display of pride. They pushed it behind the shoes. So it used to be out front. They put it on some trolleys and they've moved it. And before you start saying, well, this is because, you know, whatever, like they're just putting stuff on sale. This always happens. We're not even in June yet. And June is pride month. June is the gay month. It's very gay. Well, it it's... technically starts in May now. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you realize, but pride month starts a month early now. So we have pride months, <laughs> plural. Pride? Like, okay, but I, like, like, and, I, and, I've, and I've stated this because there are people, there are, there's a huge difference, I think, between somebody who's just gay or something and then somebody who's part of the LGBTQ community. I'm not talking about morality. I'm talking about the fact that there are probably people who watch your show. There are people who watch this show who live alternative lifestyles. It's the internet, Okay. I mean, and if you think that people that watch this, there's a lot of people like there's gay people that watch the Internet. Yes, there are. But I would feel like just like black people with BLM and, you know, making Floyd a saint and choosing all these like weird black people to be the 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 icons of like your racial movement. I'd feel offended as a black guy by getting lumped into a group. And by, you know, somehow being told that I should, you know, celebrate George Floyd, I'd feel like I'm being mocked. Wouldn't you feel like if you're an adult, like a grown ass adult, and you look at this, why do you need this? If you're gay, what, what is like, I'm going to zoom in there. What, why, who's buying pride flag marshmallow cakes? I'm being serious. Who, <laughs> who is this? Who is this for? I know who it's for, Elijah. It's for the awfuls, the affluent white liberal females to purchase so they can feel good about themselves and pat themselves on the back. I think a lot of straight people are buying these products because it makes themselves feel better about uh, not actually doing anything for society, not contributing anything to society. And instead, they're funding a soulless, impersonal mega corporation. Yeah. Well, okay, that's actually a really good point because I kind of want to I have I want to bring something up here is after after Target starts taking this stuff down. This is why I said we might be winning. I have not seen this before. Uh this comes from the direct account of the governor of California. He weighed in on this and he goes the CEO of Target Brian Cornell selling up to the LGBTQ community to the extremists. Also notice too how great it is. They had the little plus at the end, like, because they don't even know. They, they, Mary, they don't even know what the letters are. It's, imp 
It's impossible unless you're severely autistic and you watch this show, which is about 90% of the audience of this program, that you might be able to remember that. But they just add new letters. And then he says, to extremists is a real profile in courage. This isn't just a couple stores in the South. There is a systematic attack on the gay community happening across the country. Wake up, America. I love the, the, the grifter. Wake up. This doesn't stop here. You're black. You're Asian. You're Jewish. You're a woman. You're next. I mean, it, we can break this down, but there's a word for when the government and corporations work together to enforce ideology and police the public. We won't get into that today. But it's like, what do you make of this? This is so weird. It's a systematic attack on products that are being sold to gay people, that gay people are not buying. There is no systematic attack on gay people themselves. And I wanted to add this because you did mention earlier their propensity for uh, suicide. It's much higher than the rest of the population. And it's actually really sad. People aren't allowed to talk about these things. Uh, the gay community is plagued by a lot of problems at uh, higher rates like suicide, like mental illness and drug use, and they're also STDs. So at times they're fatal STDs. And uh, I think that we just want to chalk that all up to stigma at this point, but clearly because mega corporations are sponsoring their lifestyle, it's not stigma that is the reason for all of this. It's something else, it's something deeper. You're absolutely correct. And I, I do love this. This is how you always know it's disingenuous when they start like going after other minorities, right? This doesn't stop here. Like as, as if they're like targets going to like ban noodles and soy sauce. Like it's as if like, they're just going to start banning Asian, what Asians love, or they're going to prevent you. Like what company is targeting Jewish people? Can we just say how ridiculous that is? Like, a lot of the companies are owned by Jewish people. I'm from California. I lived in a very Jewish part of town in, in Hollywood. And I can tell you, there is no problems in Los Angeles with Jewish people being targeted, except, except maybe if they walked into like South Central, you know, like Watts and whatnot. But even then, Jewish people are doing pretty well. And I don't think they have anything to fear in LA. I, and women too. Like women would like... You don't want to sell gay cakes to nine-year-olds. So all the women, you should be really afraid. But you're right. It's the women. Which women? It's the it's the white, ridiculous women. But you're but it's don't the worry. affluent white liberal females. Yeah. I hate these people. And okay, I have a video of this. This is so good. Uh, in Nebraska, they were they were creating a policy uh, about this uh, about transgenders. I don't know if you know about this this politician. I uploaded this last night. Um, I think her name's like uh, Michaela Kavanaugh. Have you heard of her before? No, I haven't. Okay, so she was testifying about like this attack on trans people just the other day, and about like you know not being able to give hormones, cross sex hormones, to kids. And so she was given a, a seat on the floor to where she could really express her opposition to uh, one of the Senate bills that was trying to prevent children from accessing medication. And um, this was her response. I'm sorry that you guys, this is 40 seconds. I don't know if we'll get through it. Oh, trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. We need trans people. We love trans people. Trans people belong here. We it goes on for like three minutes, by the way. This I, is I a didn't... deeply disturbed person. <laughs> wow. And this is exactly who I'm talking about. This person is buying all of the rainbow garbage that Target is selling that was probably constructed by Chinese child laborers <laughs> so that she can feel better about herself. It's and so it's good. also like clearly th they're weaponizing women's pathological altruism against them she look at this woman she probably doesn't have children that she can care for so instead she sublimates this feeling that she needs to care for someone less fortunate than her onto this community of people yeah and I, well i'll play one more 10 more seconds just because it's so good people we love trans okay. people trans people belong here we need trans people we love trans people trans people belong here 
I love the out of breath too. She's so committed to the cause. She's lost her dignity and her breath. And the and I like this too. Like when they they start like patting the desk and <laughs> she's hitting the microphone and it's going out of whack. And it's like this like you said this poor girl like and this is where this is where the sexism comes out on the show is don't look <laughs> at me don't look at me for 5 seconds and tell me that this woman wouldn't be better off under the protection and submission to a good man at home with kids. You can argue with me that not all women should live like that. You can argue with me that that's not for you or that's not what you want. But tell me how we got from women having rights to vote to a woman screaming in a place of law and order about trans people. And it's like, it's, it's been only like, you know, it's been like a hundred years till we, till we, till we've gotten to this direction. So we went from like, Elijah, we stop the, the slippery slope fallacy. You're just spreading the slippery slope fallacy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm just kidding. But uh, there's this clip of me that actually got a lot of views where I said that it's not just children that are easy to indoctrinate. It's very easy to indoctrinate adult women because, like I said, you weaponize their nature against them so that they project their void of motherhood onto marginalized communities and they're far more malleable to woke ideology for that exact reason yeah well and you've had a few viral clips that i do want to talk about because of this idea of being taken out of context mm -hmm. uh but i want to give a i want to give a uh, word to our sponsor for today guys check it out in the description below at patriot switch.com slash so i want to play a video for you guys this is a new way we we're trying we're doing an ad and this is the first time i'm trying this as well um but this is a great company that i was already using for for a while like a little over a year back in the united states and they sent me everything that i needed and i'm going to go ahead and play it for you guys check this out what the hell is this target just made trans bathing suits with tucking pouches it's disturbing. But how do big corporations keep getting away with this? I figured out the main problem and I found a simple solution. Now, if you calculate everyone who follows me across all platforms, it's about 2 million people. Now, each of us spend about $100 a month on non-perishable consumer goods. I'm not talking about fruit and bread, but things like toothpaste, protein shakes, soaps, and lotions, everyday stuff. Now, 2 million people times $100 is over $200 million a month that we are spending at companies that hate our values, like Walmart, Target, and Amazon. Do you see the problem now? $200 million a month we're spending to fund our literal enemy. Now, if you hate all the things they stand for as much as I do, then why do we keep giving them our hard-earned dollars? That's why I'm passionate about the Patriot Switch movement, to switch away from these corporations that care more about profits than people, and instead to a family-owned Made in America manufacturer an online store that has hundreds of things we use all the time. They don't have everything. We can't completely get away from big box strongholds. However, we can vote with our dollars and switch a lot of our monthly shopping. We can either be part of the problem or become the solution. Take a stand with me and over a million other Americans at patriotswitch.com slash SO. See what I saw. It'll shock you. And test it out. Link in bio. Check it out. patriotswitch.com slash SO. And I leave you with that too. Check it out, patriotswitch.com slash SO. If you're wanting to switch away from giving your money every single month to the big box stores and you want to be able to support a family-owned Made in America business, this is a great way to get all of your essentials and the things that you need and stop giving money to these companies. It's great. And I've been using their products and now my dad does too. So check it out. Uh, Mary, as we jump into this, uh, let's talk about this. So one of the things that I, that I think is so interesting is the, the problem with this. I have, I have a tweet that I want to bring up. Um, that I find to be quite funny. Um, where is this? Okay, yeah, here, here's the tweet. Is a lot of times the reason why I think why we lose the culture wars because we're trying to be a genuine, I think we're trying to have an honest argument or like a, a discussion, like, like you said, where we go, look, dude, I'm not trying to attack gay people, okay? And in fact, if you keep taking me out of context, actually your plan's gonna backfire because people are gonna start attacking gay people because when you refuse to have a genuine argument, you start just pissing people off and they feel like their, their options have been limited and they feel like they have to start responding in ways that are probably not going to be helpful long term, which sometimes could end in violence, which I'm not promoting. And so it's like when you don't listen to people, they, they get frustrated. And the reason why I think we keep losing is because we come to the table and are like, hey, we actually are not trying to attack gay people, okay? We, we just don't want baby onesies we don't want you selling products and targeting children 
with adult themes, right? We don't want babies being introduced to mental illness, suicide, sexual degeneracy. We're not even saying you shouldn't do that. We're just saying we don't want babies. And then the governor comes on and says, you know what? This is an attack against women. This is an attack against Jews. This is an attack on all of our sovereignty. This is a, you know, my favorite one, an attack on democracy. And they come with these bad faith arguments and this, this weird, um, like taking, not only just taking us out of context, but I would say mischaracterizing and misrepresenting the entire conversation. Like that's not like, you know what I mean? Like where it's like, it's like for the little mermaid, the good example of that would be everyone's like, Hey, the little mermaid though, is like a historical story. It has semblance and like, like, you know, we just, why don't you just find an actress? It's called casting. People win Academy Awards for this. Why don't you find an actress that like resembles, uh, the, the character? That would be kind of cool, right? And they're like, oh, so you're racist. You hate, people aren't watching Little Mermaid because they they hate blacks. And you're like, yo, you, where'd you come up with this language? I didn't even, like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And they just take us out of context. And then I think this pisses people off and it makes people, because you, you assume and you say, well, you're unreasonable. Then they actually become unreasonable. So it's like people weren't racist and I think they are racist now. People weren't genuinely sexist. I think they are now. And I think people weren't actually hating LGBTQ people. And I think they are. And I don't know if they're in the wrong for it because they've been like backed up into a corner. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like they've been sort of like they tried to do what right. And now they've been taken out of context. Now they're just pissed off. Yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from. I I wouldn't paint with a broad brush like people are like, on the conservative side are becoming hateful, but they are being constantly inundated with all of this fear porn and it is a fatigue campaign all of the the pride month stuff especially it's a fatigue campaign so that you feel powerless and helpless and it's exactly so that boycotts won't happen and it's so that you won't feel like you have alternatives and it is better to support businesses that uh share your values rather than just relying on boycotting because at some point you'll have to boycott the whole world to avoid all of this ideology you would have to boycott amazon target walmart every mega corporation there is and your and your own banks probably so yeah i i definitely see where you're coming from but uh it doesn't have to end there well it doesn't have to but like it's almost like i wonder if that was their plan like because because yeah, the yeah. conservatives weren't hateful and they were just saying, hey, we just want some standards, some boundaries here, right? Just put some brakes on this. Stop. And then they, they go, oh, so you want to kill trans kids? You're like, huh? What, what does that even Yeah, mean? they're turning it into a hostage sh- situation. They're literally like holding a trans kid in a headlock with a gun to their head and saying, if you don't go along with our plan of gender affirmation, then you are essentially murdering this child. And it's the complete opposite. Yeah. And like, and this is what I meant is like, we finally, you know, have some semblance. I don't even believe that Twitter is even, even overtly free by any means. Unironically, the only thing that's really changed on Twitter Perhaps, right? I, I even find my reach to be worse since Elon bought it and changed the algorithms, whatever. But the only thing that's really changed policy-wise is that you can follow science and that you don't have to abide by woke nonsense on one, on one rule, which is that you can misgender people, which is already a trap statement, right? Misgendering? You mean I'm not buying into your colloquialism and your, and your falsehood and your made-up reality? I'm not misgendering you. I'm actually correct gendering you. I'm I'm, I'm using language that uh, applies to reality. That's all that's really changed. And that didn't stop now this new push. That, this is what I meant by bad faith. This push of now Twitter is a far right social network. It can no longer be denied saying that Twitter has long been described even by its most ardent users as a hell site. But under Elon Musk, Twitter has evolved into a platform that is indistinguishable from the wastelands of alternative social media sites such as Truth Social and Parler, which Parler I don't think people have used for several years now. It is now a right-wing social network. Um, like, that's crazy. All that Twitter <clears throat> changed is that you just can actually use people's correct pronouns. That's all I know about the only policy I know that's really changed. And now that's enough for the left to say, oh, it is a wasteland 
of right-wing extremism. Like, this is the disingenuous behavior I'm, I'm, I'm referring to. Yeah, I, there's definitely still a muzzle on conservatives on Twitter, and I'm extremely wary of this woman that Elon is putting in charge now. I don't know anything about her, her background, but I mean, <laughs> it's a female CEO. I'm immediately skeptical. I like that. Me, me too, because you know why? <laughs> it's par partially- Hashtag me too. Yeah, hashtag we've all, we've all been violated by Twitter, I feel like. <laughs> It's, I feel like it's all, all of us are united because you just know it's going to be like a woman of color. And this is the same thing with all affirmative action. There might be a black guy that's really in Harvard because he's actually intelligent and passed his benchmarks, but you just don't know if that's why he's there. Cause there's so many more that are just there and lowered standards cause they're black. So you don't know if this woman really is qualified for the job. She's really good at what she's doing. Can a woman be qualified for the job? That's another story. But in the end, it's like we have this chick who has a history of kowtowing literally to advertisers, and that's her whole mission. She's like, hey, we've got we've to moderate content so it pleases advertisers, and advertisers are fascist shits they, uh, because of the ESG scores. Like if, if this is not hitting your head, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this and you don't get, get what I'm talking about, that's fine. You've got to do more research, but it's like corporations, as long as ESG exists, we are not going to see corporations back anything up publicly besides this woke nonsense. It's not even wokeness. We got to stop calling it woke. It's like corporate instilled ideology. It's corporatism, right? This is what this is. Yeah. Remember when the adpocalypse happened on YouTube and all of these YouTubers had to start censoring their content to become advertiser friendly and it just tanked a lot of people's revenue. And what I found, I mean, I don't know much about business on that level, but what I found ironic about that is that a lot of people's YouTube channels were their own businesses. And who is to say whether they agree with having these advertisers like Coca-Cola on their videos? It, it, that doesn't seem right to me. And now Twitter is increasingly hosting video content. I think that the Daily Wire has decided to start hosting a lot of video content on Twitter and uh something similar could be on the horizon there. Yeah. And I think this show, I think this show might like long-term. So I, I have some good news. Um, if you're watching this, we've actually partnered, we're, we're, we're changing the direction of this, of this show because we, we are waiting to kind of see what happened. Um, we're not going to be going after like numbers. Now we're, we have a real like dedicated, the SOBs, the slightly offensive backers. You guys are wild, bro. They could literally like delete our channels and you would find me. I, you guys are awesome. I li literally, like, I don't even know what, what is going on, but you guys somehow find the content no matter where it goes, no matter where they hide it, no matter what's, what's happening. We actually get more views on Rumble now than we even get on YouTube, which is fantastic. And I'm hoping that we move in that direction. Um, plus, like I said, if you guys, you know, you guys are on Locals, that's so good and helpful. Um, because, you know, the problem is, is like, with the adpocalypse with this stuff, I don't want to censor even. Like I, like, I don't want to censor myself because I, I know that I'm not hateful. I know that I'm not targeting people, but I'm honest. And now that honesty is the equivalency of hate, that's the problem that we're at. It, it's, it's not that we have to, you know, I understand censorship and this, so you can take me out of context in this. I actually totally agree with censorship in terms of airwaves. Like, I don't think I should be able to behead somebody on my show and play it on a platform. I don't think that that's, I think there's a, there's a set of rules that we should agree to. I'm against CP. I'll even censor myself saying that just because I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't know who's watching this. I'm against, you know, abuse and these types of things. But when we move the standard from like, hey, basic common sense to now it's like, you know, oh, you're, you're demeaning, like, like how we got demonetized again. You're demeaning certain groups based on characteristics they can't change. Okay, that would make sense if what I was demeaning someone for was the fact that they were deformed or genetically different. But now that these concepts you can't change is like who you have sex with or like the fact you're chopping your balls off. It's like, you're just making it up. You're making it up now. How can I agree with that? You're saying you can't change? I literally did my thesis in university 
before this was popular on gender dysphoria and transitioning many, many, many years ago. And it's 100% a choice. And that's why you literally have to provide gender reaffirming care and gender affirming care. You have to literally make many choices to make this a reality. Or the, in the end, they just kill themselves. And that's a choice too. Suicide's a choice. So it's like you're not born this way, you, but you are because you're born fallen and you have a nature. And we're all a little bit depressed. We all have a little bit of anxiety. We all have issues. And the answer isn't to make it the matters worse and by agreeing with the delusion. And that's what I'm saying. That, like you said with the censorship, it's so bad today because what they're asking us to agree with, what they're asking us to censor is to agree to a lie. And I can't take part in that. Yeah, it's not even so much that the goalposts or the standards on YouTube uh, for what it takes to be advertiser friendly on YouTube or Twitter or all of these platforms have changed and become unacceptable. It's that they're intentionally making them so vague and muddled that it's impossible to follow them. So it comes down to a matter of our freedom of conscience. Are you willing to self-censor to the degree that they need you to to be advertiser friendly? That's what it's about. And it's a psychological war. Yeah. And, but we do see that it does kind of work, right? Cause these are the stocks right here of, of, uh, Anheuser-Busch or InBev, the company that the backlash is crashing, um, their, their, their overall market cap or value. And they have lost, I think of Bud Light itself, they've lost 24.6% of their sales in the quarter, which is significant, right? That's, that's a fourth of it's revenue. good to see. Yeah, but it does Yeah, InBev, look. by the way, just like the company name InBev sounds so soulless. I can't believe that any community of people would feel like these woke overtures are genuinely uh, like a form of outreach to them, like of genuine care and compassion. It's a mega corporation. They don't care about you. Yeah, and did you see this? This is a this was a video from North Face that was incur like actually encouraging people to come out of the closet. This just came out. Watch this. I didn't Hi, see this. It's me, Patagonia, a real life homosexual. And today I'm here with the North Face. We are here to invite you to come out in nature with us. Wow, this is nice. We like to call this little tour the Summer of Pride. This tour has everything. Hiking, community, art, lesbians, lesbians making art. Last year, we gay saw shade across the nation and celebrated pride across the nation with hundreds of you across the nation. This year, we're back, back, back again with two new stops. Atlanta, GA. Why? Because you're there. In Salt Lake City, we're coming for you. Hi, here we go. Of course! This year, all these fabulous speakers will be coming from inside this TV to a nature near you. So come outside and celebrate the beautiful LGHG TV community. It's like these people try to look terrifying on purpose. It's a nightmare. That's a lot. <laughs> There's not much to say. Hey, wow. you just said this. We're adding this. You said May and June. We now have months. Now summer of pride. For the summer, yeah, it's right? going to turn into a season. And then it's just going to be a year of pride. And then we have state-enforced homosexuality. Yeah, state-enforced homo... It's... What's, it's just what... like Sam Hyde said it would happen. I know. Dude, by the way, that fish tank live that he did, I feel like that has got less viewers than it will. If you don't know what I'm talking about, whatever. But... His fish tank live is I, like I do. iconic. It's iconic. I mean, that's this is gonna be famous ten years down the road. People are gonna remember this. What an epic, what an epic shit show that is. Yeah, I've been paying a little bit of attention to it, and we covered it on Pop Culture Crisis. Um, they said it's gonna be the most important reality television program in all of history, uh, and it's it's definitely you should keep an eye on it because. Uh, the, the ups and downs. It's been an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's, let me jump into this. I'm going to move into the segment that I just call laughing out loud because I find this next segment to be funny. Uh, let's talk about this. All right, guys, as we jump into this, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today, Pixatine. You can check it out. These are nicotine-infused toothpicks. 
that are not only so good, but you can use them anywhere on a plane, on a train, in an automobile. They give you that nicotine buzz, and if you're 21 or older, uh, this is an amazing alternative to smoking or a substitute slash something you can just do in between. You know that vapes are uh, outlawed many places. You even have to have a permit to bring one into Australia with real nicotine. They're like outlawed here. I don't know if you know about that. But you also uh, know that there's all these additives and chemicals. I love going out for good smoke. Sometimes you just want that calm, chill effect. I do like nicotine. Maybe you don't, but that's okay. Some of us are right. Others of us are wrong. Um, and if you check these out, they basically are a small little container. You put them in your pocket. You're not going to have any trouble getting them onto airlines or using them anywhere. They don't have all the gross gunk like chewing tobacco or some of these other products. And I know many people who have used these to overcome other issues like drinking or drugs or things when they have nervous energy. They've been able to use these toothpicks and they've been very helpful. So whether you're looking for an alternative to smoking, something to supplement your smoking or addition, or you know somebody who you've been trying to encourage to stop smoking, I encourage you to check out Pixatine at pixatine.com slash Elijah. Get 20% off the entire store. P-I-X-O-T-I-N-E dot com slash E-L-I-J-A-H. That's pixatine.com slash Elijah for 20% off all these amazing products. Check out the uh, cinnamon flavor. That's actually absolutely freaking amazing. And you'll love it. Check it out. Pixatine.com slash Elijah. Uh, okay, so the, the controversy is something about the, the woke wars. Um, I don't know how long the show's going to last because it, it's like these, there's a real popular um, style right now of shows, right? You basically have, you had Fresh and Fit, which is like the black, it's like, I just call it black, <laughs> black hoe convos i like them by the way it's like a bunch of black hoes they literally they're in miami so they have an endless supply of just half drunk strippers and sex workers to choose from for that show it's insane right and they've been doing they've been going strong those are good guys uh, i you know they, they do they do good stuff over there and then of course uh then you had um then you have pearl who popped up out of nowhere and she's become sort of the british version of that from a female perspective and then there was a long-standing channel that started a podcast uh, a while ago called Whatever, which was like the West Coast white girl version of Fresh and Fit. And I'm not, they didn't, no one's copying each other. It's just di different, right? Maybe, maybe we'll start up the Australia <clears throat> version here because, oh, do we have hoes here. Um, but I like your uh, street interview with all of the Australian women talking about body count. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> yeah, 80 at 29. That's pretty, that's pretty significant. That's pretty crazy, right? To even count at that high of a number is psychotic. Yeah. The, would you agree? Yeah. No, 100%. Like, I, I feel like you would stop. Wouldn't you stop after like 15 or 20 or something you just don't know anymore? Wouldn't you just say, I don't know? It's really sad. I think a lot of these women, uh, they've been so desensitized to sex and it's like part of our hypersexual culture that's been totally sapped of all real human connection and real human libido. Like they're not going after sex because they enjoy sex. They're probably going after sex because it gives them this false feeling of closeness or affirmation. And it's really sad to see them fall down that rabbit hole. Okay. So let's talk about this. Um, so there was a episode that was on. Uh, and just to let the audience know, people, you know, have given me crap. They'll say, oh, you're soft on people. No, I, this is just not a drama show. And this is not a gotcha show. This is a show where we like to talk about cultural issues and social issues. Um, I literally leave the drama for the homosexuals and the bitchy women. And we just keep to to ourselves. And so whenever I want to talk about a guest's personal life or something, we always bring it up with the guest first. I just want you guys to know this that watch the show. If there's ever anything that's personal or just controversy, we do talk to the guests, say, hey, are you cool talking about this? What's going on? Because uh, we want to make sure we're all on the same team that we're working together. And this was public. Uh, you were on the show. Who were you on the show with? Look at People said that your name's Ghost it Girl. It was a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people call me Ghost Girl, but on whatever they call me Virgin Mary, uh, just because my name happens to be Mary and it came about in conversation that I'm saving sex for marriage, which is not a common value that people hold these days, especially in my generation. So uh, yeah, that was my nickname on the show. There were 10 other people on that episode. Uh, so there's Chase Savinbra. He's been on a lot of episodes. There's John Doyle. And then uh, that's Modern Life Dating on the other side of me. He's like one of those red pill type of YouTubers. And then on the other side of the, the table, there was Billy Ray Brandt uh, and then Destiny and his crew. Okay, so 
we're gonna watch this clip. So apparently, uh, I wanna. I think this this comes from um, here. Okay, so you said, "Hey, moist critical, moist critical." Oh, is that that long haired guy that looks like anomaly but is like not based? <laughs> I don't know much about moist critical. I have not watched his content to be totally honest. I just had one of his videos sent to me uh, after I was on whatever. People said he mentioned me in the video, so I went and saw that he aimed some criticism at me uh, because there was a viral clip uh, where in in one part of it, mental abuse was brought up. Uh, they were talking about what what is a justifiable reason for divorce. And I'll reiterate it here. I've reiterated it countless times at this point that abuse and adultery are both totally permissible grounds for divorce. This is not controversial, at least to most of Christian circles. Um, but all that we were criticizing is no fault divorce because that has caused so much destruction to the family. Um, so that was the topic of conversation. Then mental abuse was brought up and I said, well, that's less cut and dry than physical abuse. And Moist Critical asked why, and I think it's pretty obvious why it's way harder to legally define mental abuse compared to physical abuse. It's much harder to prove that in a court of law. And in a hypothetical situation where no-fault divorce wasn't the norm in our society anymore, I would worry that claims of mental abuse would just become the new no-fault divorce. So that's why I said that. Okay, so this is the clip. I'm going to play this. Like, what if it's mental abuse? <laughs> okay, now it's less cut and dry. If it's, if it's, if it's, it's you're like, a child. So that lady that's behind them is saying that it's less cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse? Why? Abuse is abuse. What, what are you talking about? So far up until this point in the episode, she hasn't said too much. She mainly just kind of agrees with everything the guys say. But she says it's less cut and dry when it comes to mental abuse, which leads me to believe that she thinks it should be cut and dry when it comes to divorce for physical abuse. But she didn't say anything. She didn't chime up and say like, hey, I agree, the marriage should end then. She just stayed silent because I guess she was just looking for things to fight them on as opposed to agree with, which I think is always such a weird component of these debates where if you agree with your opponent, you're apparently losing. Like. Yeah, so this was all in response to a question from Destiny's wife. She just brought up this hypothetical situation. What if there is a young person, 18, 19, 20, that gets married and marriage is really important to them. They're probably from a religious community and they end up about a year into marriage being in an abusive situation. Would that be reason for them to get a divorce and leave their abusive spouse? Obviously, yes, they should leave. If if someone is beating you or abusing you, you should not stay in that situation, especially if kids are involved. Um, and I believe that I, like, I'm almost certain I reiterated that multiple times. Um, and if I, if I didn't say it enough, I'm saying it now, I said it on Twitter. Uh, but it seems like in this clip, Voice Critical took my silence to mean that I agree with uh, one of the other panelists' opinion, which is that you should endure and you should just stay and people don't stay in relationships through rough patches enough. And I think that's not, uh, I think that's a reductive point of view. Yeah, but Destiny was calling you out on this. He was like, I literally made space for you to speak yeah. multiple times on the show. Lol, you agree with the take a thousand, or I guess that's more than a thousand percent. You think that if women are claiming abuse in a relationship, they're just making it up or being weak. Just own the own the take stop being so cowardly about it holy shit and so he's coming at you like saying hey and this is what they do this is what the bad faith is and, and i find this to be always interesting you know i debated destiny at a college uh at a university and he told me after that he this is this is a, uh, ironic that he didn't want to debate again we debated uh on ukraine and some of these issues i think we actually debated twice two different mm -hmm. universities um, because he said like, I wasn't sensational enough and I wasn't like playing to the sensation. Like I was just like too, he said like too nice of a guy and like willing, I was just wanted to discuss the points. Like that's with him. I just want to have a reasonable argument, have a good discussion and genuinely debate the topic. But because I wasn't like, you know, some of these more sensational people that he had been with like Milo or, or Gavin or different people that that's not what he was trying to do, which I understand he's an entertainer. And he's, you know, whatever. He's just trying to do that. But for a guy who, who's out there who is trying to entertain and is trying to push these things, 
if you're just being quiet and you're just listening and you're just letting people discuss in a large room, to try to claim and make drama out of that and say, oh, that's because you agree. That's because you agree with them and you want people to be abused and you think women are weak. It's like, it's no words. So then I'm going to put words in your mouth. That's what I feel like is going on here. Yeah, I, it's really bizarre to assume that because I didn't speak up in that exact moment that I denigrate victims of abuse and think that all of the women who claim they're being abused are lying. Uh, I think he's very clearly using a dishonest tactic here, but I expect nothing less from Destiny because he's known for doing that. And one of his debate tactics is just to talk as fast as possible, make so many points that you can't possibly refute them all at once. And yeah, he puts words in your mouth. Uh, so he's doubling down. I've like gone back and forth with him on Twitter over this already like a few times. Well, yeah, and, and I think it's really interesting too because like when, when lifestyles are so diametrically opposed, I mean, cause right, he's in an open marriage and whatever, and he's got, you know, they have this, this, this type of relationship yeah. that I guess I like, call it like polyamory type thing. And it, it's, it's understandable that people have different lifestyles and paths, but I think it's funny to go after somebody who's because of what they didn't say and saying that that's complicit or that they agree when in reality you're making a good point. It's just like with no fault divorce or with abortion, right? Abortion was supposed to be safe and rare. It was literally supposed to be that in, in cases of a mother that's endangered. And that's the argument people still make today. Whenever you say, hey, abortion should be illegal, they go, what about when a mother's life's at risk? What about in rape? What about in incest? And it's like, okay, but that's like less than 3% of abortions, okay? So in, in some, of these, some of these cases, most abortions are just elective and it's just people wanting to get an abortion. And this, that's what the slippery slope does. So when you're saying, yeah, mental abuse without defining what that is, remember misgendering someone's mental abuse. So if you're married and your wife says, call me a him and you're like, I'm not calling you a him. Is that mental abuse? Like where does, where does the, the characteristic of what abuse is get defined? Do you have a definition? Like mm -hmm. where would, where would abuse be to where that's finally a standard to divorce? Yeah, and for context, which obviously there was no context present in that clip, we were about four and a half hours into a five and a half hour long podcast, and I'm on a panel with 10 other people, most of whom stream and talk for a living. Everyone had their two cents that they wanted to add in, and I said I found it difficult to get my thoughts out there and find an opportunity to speak without people talking over each other. And I had that experience on the show before. It's no fault of anyone in particular, but um, yeah, it's like something that not a lot of people would find it easy to do, but there are a lot of people, especially Destiny's fans, intensely Monday morning quarterbacking it like so hard saying that they would have spoken up, they would have offered a rebuttal. And I, I guess I was just waiting for the right moment. And instead he's using that to kind of attack me in a bad faith way. Well, the Bible says, even when a fool keeps silent, he's thought to be wise, right? In Proverbs. That it's like sometimes just being quiet when there's a group of a lot of loud people with very strong opinions might be the best recourse because I don't think people go to these arguments with a genuine authenticity. This is the, the, the backside of, of online rhetoric. Look, God bless the whatever people. I have, no, I have no problem with these types of podcasts. I have no problem with entertainment. But I think that these are have nothing to do with coming to a conclusion and none of these internet debates do. It's all about getting sound bites for your Twitter viral moment to make it seem like you BTFO'd the opposite side. And it's a lot of the arguments are not, yeah. are not to actually like win. That's not, not saying you weren't there for that reason, but a lot of people do not care. This is all they want is some drama. And I, it's too exhausting to me. I don't want this. Like, why do you, why do you want to yeah. fight with some chick? I was also, yeah, I was also um, kind of reflecting on the futility of, arguing about the ethics of divorce or arguing about marriage with people who don't even remotely agree on the, what the definition of marriage is or should be. Uh, obviously, as, as a Catholic, I see marriage as a sacrament. I see it as something that the state doesn't have the authority to dissolve. And destiny is over here in an open marriage, which I don't even know what that means. 
and we're arguing about divorce and like what common ground do we have to even debate about it at that point that's like that's literally what it's like it's like a nun and a stripper debating modesty you know like where you just don't it's where, where can you really get to on this right like where can we really uh, arrive at and sometimes i feel like the era of the red pill where it started which was trying to come to to, to the truth has become like, well, we know the truth. Now let's just be viral. And we're actually back to the blue pill because now it's still about narcissism, you know, like, and you can't even just be a quiet girl and be meek and be on and just hold your tongue without being accused of like some nefarious thing. And to me, that's a feminine quality as a trait, like being able to know when to be meek and humble and just withhold yourself from a conversation when guys are going at it and accomplishing maybe nothing to be completely honest. It's like you're there, but that's <laughs> the weird part about their side is because they don't see men and women as different. They don't see them as complimentary or as unique. It's like we're all equal in all ways, biological, intellectually. Like they don't see us as uniquely and separately different, but complimentary. It's like, why would you, I don't even see what the point of going after a woman on the internet like that is and trying to call her out and attack her. That's a very catty, bitchy, like feminine energy. You know, I, to me, that's what that is. Why? Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't even trying to come off like some kind of bashful, shy, like trad wife character. I was just, you know, uh, trying my best to give my takes where I could in that situation. And it's interesting that you mentioned the red pill movement. I do believe we've kind of gone into a horseshoe, the horseshoe theory where uh it's like hedonism all the way back to hedonism all over again there was a youtuber there who is more of the red pill inclination and i feel like the main thing he disagreed with destiny about is that men should be the only ones allowed to be unfaithful to their wives destiny on the other hand believes that his wife is equally uh, entitled to be unfaithful to him but both of them believe that sex is meaningless and that it's just pleasure seeking and that you can use people as receptacles for masturbation, essentially. It's disgusting. And I think that there were other voices on that panel that needed to be heard more who have a more uh, salient view of marriage and sex and what those things mean. Right. And I, and I bring this up. Uh, I think I have this 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 article here, but showing the, the way that people have viewed things. The, do you know what I was thinking? These podcasts are only here because young people have too much time on their hands because they're not married and they don't have kids. And I saw this this uh, this graph. You brought up no-fault divorce, right? And uh, by the age of 25, today's young adults have gained, around, uh, have gained ground on early young adults regarding financial milestones. However, the amount of 25-year-olds that uh, were married, right, I think it went down, like, significantly, like, absolutely significantly if you're talking about marriage in the 80s it was 63% so almost almost three-fourths because really I mean 63% were married but there was probably a, a decent amount of people shacking up or living together basically in a in these relationships then they could have been divorced already too by the way it's 22% are now so now only one out of less than one out of four people are married and have kids and that's what I think a lot of our problems are is like it's not hard get married be fruitful and multiply but we're like we're like developmentally inhibited babies in the fact that we're going on podcasts and arguing whether a woman should have condemned mental abuse more. It's like, don't you have kids to worry about? Isn't your baby crying on the other room? Like, don't you need to go like work and like help your child? And we're so like narcissistic and thinking about everything in terms of what we define as. And I got to also say this too, like even some of these discussions, like what happened to privacy and just like our own personal lives? Like, Hey, Destiny, if you and your wife want to live that way, like, mm -hmm. okay, but why are we like advertising this? That's the whole idea of even the trans stuff. Like, if you want to be this way, I'm not like telling you you can't, and I'm not particularly coming against you and saying like, I'm trying to change you. Like you, you do, you're, you're doing you, and I'm not coming to your show and saying, you need to stop this. Like you have to stop this today. But why is it that you're so offended that other people view life differently and you feel like they need to be as open as you are and, and, and whatever? And also, how can we say that this is good, that we have a bunch of late 20s and mid 30s that are just walking around trying to find themselves 
and figure out their sexuality. <laughs> and like, it's like, dude, go get married and have kids. That's probably the best way to keep yourself distracted. Work hard with your hands. The Bible literally says that busy bodies, like when you don't work, you, you start getting yourself involved in like other people's business. Basically it says like the idea, the best way to fight gossip is to stay busy and women stay busy at home with the kids, whatever they're doing. And men as well stay busy. But this idea of just like sitting around and gossiping on the internet, it just seems unproductive. You're totally right that we've lost uh, all sense of propriety and discretion today. Uh, and it's ironic, obviously, because I went on this dating podcast where I know that I'm going to be asked personal questions, but I feel like I, I don't have uh, the need to like air dirty laundry. And Destiny voluntarily went on this podcast to talk about his alternative lifestyle and then uh, you know recoils when he's actually confronted about it. Um, and you did say, you know, it's not hard, be fruitful and multiply. The solutions are right there. It's obvious. but and it is it is simplistic what makes us happy as human beings, I agree. But I won't discredit that it is incredibly hard to uh, find people who have similar values today as a young person. Uh, to find someone who is looking for a serious relationship at all to begin with, let alone uh, looking toward marriage and children. And I think that's caused a lot of deep uh, resentment to bubble up in both men and women at the opposite sex. And these podcasts have kind of turned into an outlet for spewing that at each other. And uh, that's why people are viewing them, unfortunately. Um, but there are ways to participate in that. Hopefully I was a step in that direction to, you know, do it in a constructive way. Yeah. Nothing reminds me of that. That podcast though, you did a good job because we'll never forget Gorlock the Destroyer, which was by far one of the greatest moments. Uh, this is Walt Disney's newest film called the yeah. Gorlock. Poor, poor dude. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd feel less keen to attack him if it was a he, if it was a her, right? If this was a chick. I'd be like, poor girl, you know, like some sort of thyroid problem. But like, I also have to say with Gorlock, while many people attack him and have been rude, I've actually become a fan because this level of confidence, we can all learn something from this level of, of confidence. Am I right? This is like to be able to just be this way and, and be a badass bitch or whatever he says. I mean, hey, sometimes you yeah. might not even want to go out. You might have a, <laughs> pimp, a pimple and feel self-conscious. But there are, there are people like this that go on the internet and feel proud of their look. The craziest part is that the host, Brian, said he had no idea that this guest was transgender when he invited uh, Gorlock on, but then found out when they started discussing it. And uh, yeah, once you get to that level of morbid obesity, you kind of, you've, you've messed up your endocrine system so badly and you don't really have secondary sex characteristics anymore, so no one can tell what you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Oh, I just love it though. Um, so just so you guys know, if you're watching this, uh, I want to just give a huge uh, shout out to one of our sponsors for today. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. If you watch the show regularly, um, and why I care so much about undertack.com, uh, underwear and boxers and these garments. So, um, if you don't know already, these are some of the most comfortable pieces of clothing you'll ever wear. And what I mean that is because they're close to your body. They hug your body, but they're not too tight. And of course, they come in all different color shapes and sizes, and they fit all color shapes and sizes. These hold your junk in place. They keep it breathing. They wick away moisture. They don't peel. They have an elastic waistband. It's not too tight, not too loose, doesn't lose elasticity. They last so long. I haven't had a single one develop a hole in years. And they all fit the way that they always have fit, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I am actually, if you guys know, I'm actually wearing them right now. So yes, I'm actually wearing my under tack because I love them and you should check them out. Uh, their battle force is tested. They've been using the field. I wear them when I sit here for long hours cause they don't ride up. And I think the best part about them is that they don't lose shape. So you don't want to wear those boxers are super tight when you wash them. They're loose after wearing, you know, wearing them all day. It's like, let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to boxers that treat you the way you'd want to be treated and keep your family jewels protected with the highest quality materials. Check it out right now. Go to undertack.com. U N D E R T A C.com. Com, promo code offensive two zero. That's undertack.com. Promo code offensive O F F E N S I V E two zero for twenty percent off the entire store. Check it out at uh, undertack.com. Promo code offensive two zero. I really do encourage you. Those are really great boxers. 
Um, I want to look at WTF. These are some things that didn't make it into the other segments, but they're also, we got to talk about them. We still got a half an hour left on the show. Stick with us, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Well, guys, uh, if you don't know this, society has been falling apart on more than just the internet. In real life, it's funny to watch people think that the world's about having a good faith argument. I don't know if you saw this video. This this woman, I think this is L this might be L.A., uh, but there's this new popular trend of street takeovers. Have you heard about that? Uh, I might have seen this before, but let's watch. Okay, check this out. So there's a street takeover, and that means whatever you want it to mean. And this woman is like trying to get through the intersection and let's see how this goes. The best part about this. I love the guy, the guy wearing the love never fails shirt. Love <laughs> as never he's kicking fails. in her car. I know, but this is what it is. Like, by the way, she's a, she's retarded for getting out of her car. Can we just say that? Like, that's yeah. not, you should just drive. You don't, you don't get out of your car in these, like, and they just, she did, <clears throat> they basically told her to turn around. She didn't turn around. She's trying to get through the intersection apparently. And then they destroyed her car. And it's like, this is what, this is what the internet is in real life. It's just what it is. Like, you're just trying to have good faith. You're just trying to get to where you're going, trying to have a conversation, and you get surrounded by these woke people who have messages of love, and meanwhile, they're literally the most degenerate, degrading pieces of crap in the entire world. This woman got out of her car because she's used to living in a high-trust community and doesn't realize that she, uh, she drove into the wrong part of town. Yeah, more than just... Yeah, but it's like, what the heck is this? I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't quite understand. Like, I feel really bad for her though, too, because these people were so aggressive. And this reminds me of what's going to happen in the last days. It's just that people are going to have like no um, moral compass. That they're going to be like haters of what's good and like bitter. And you know, when you read all the description, like, how are you as an adult doing this? I don't get it. Like, I get adults making mistakes, right? I get, I get car accidents. You accidentally hit someone, you were texting, you made a mistake or something. But it's like walking up to some woman and just destroying her vehicle. It's like, these are animals and they're not even all black. So when people say, oh, Elijah calls black people animals. No, I call animalistic behavior animals. And if you somehow are assuming and tying that into black people, then I think you're the racist because you're the one that it's assuming that's only black people behaving like that. Here, these are Hispanic people and some white people, or at least white Hispanics as they like to call them today. And they've decided to ruin this woman's life. I do feel bad for her, but I, I, and I don't agree with Tim on this, but she probably voted for this. Like she probably voted for the policies that make this <laughs> stuff possible. Yeah, probably. It's unfortunate. I see that you've been um, covering the antics of Secret Mizzy, right? That UK streamer. He's like terrorizing the public. He did the home invasion TikTok that went viral. Um, yeah, I looked more into him and he went on Pierce Morgan and just blatantly played the race card and said that all of the hate he's getting is because he's black and Pierce Morgan just epically called him out and was like, uh, no, I think you're an idiot. It has nothing to do with your race. Yeah. But does it though? That's the, that's the question is like, we, this is where I, you really get into hot water with these arguments. Like, obviously we just don't want people acting like idiots. But we go, okay, we don't want you acting like an idiot. It's not about your race. Then they come back and say, it is the race. Like, so what are you saying? This is how you mm -hmm. behave? Because if, if, if it is about race, then you're insinuating that this is how your race behaves. And so when we're coming against this, like, like this behavior, that we are coming against a race. It would be like, you know, outlawing sunburns for you and me, right? I mean, that would be racially targeting because, well, God knows. God knows sunscreen is a, probably your friend. Hopefully you use good kind, but you know, we will toast out in the Australia outback and 
if you outlawed sunscreen, I'd say, hey, that's targeted towards race, towards people's skin color that need this, this product. But for the most part, like, do you get what I'm hinting at? I mean, it sounds, it sounds horrible, but they're the ones claiming that this is how black people act by making it a racial argument. When we never tried to, do we take them credibly? Do we take them at their, at their argument? Do we take it seriously? Yeah, I, I absolutely get where you're going, working man. Um, I mean, this guy, Mizzy, he started the conversation about his race by saying, you know, he's actually the victim. Where it, the all evidence proves he has been on an actual criminal rampage for chasing clout on TikTok and on Twitch. And thankfully, he's been banned from those platforms now, like rah-rah censorship for that one. Um, but like... I even saw one of the videos, he's in a train station, he goes up to this group of young women and he starts like petting this girl's hair. And when her friend tells him to stop, he starts threatening to kill them. He said, do you wanna die today? I'll take you out right now. Over and over again, he said this to them. And I, it was really hard for me to watch because you can just see that it's just not in women's nature to stand up for themselves like that or defend themselves in lethal, potentially lethal situations like that, they were just sitting there and taking it. And now we live in a society where men are actively discouraged from stepping into situations to defend women uh, because they're going to be the ones that get in trouble. They're going to be the ones that are prosecuted. Yeah, I, I also feel like with the racial thing, like if a white person did that, they would have been universally condemned. I think it didn't really matter. If you're, yeah. if, you, if you're faking crimes, I feel like there's a borderline too between faking the crime and it actually just becoming a crime, like threatening to kill. Yeah. Him. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? He, he claims that a lot of it was staged, but I don't believe him for a second. There was one video where he literally stood behind a guy and then pounced on him. Um, and he was like also harassing Jewish people. Uh, he was like, uh, in other videos, he, he like went to a library and started destroying books. He's, uh, made videos that are like filming in front of people's faces deliberately. He knows exactly what he's doing. And that's why I don't take him at face value when he says like, I'm getting hate because I'm black. He knows exactly what he's doing when he plays that, that race card too. It's incredibly uh, bad faith behavior. And he knows the, the type of people who are going to sympathize with that rhetoric. Well, yeah. And, and the, also the, the weird idea, too, that I don't know if black people use that card because it's advantageous and it works. It does work. So I don't know if that's why they use it or do they actually believe it? Because sometimes the media is so demeaning towards black individuals. Like I would be so offended, right, by, by the way that black people are referred to. Like look at this article that came out. Um, like, so this is about, you know, promoting abortion. This is just from the other day. What it's like to have an abortion denied by Dobbs. Dobbs will throw many lives into disarray. Uh, Lady, Ladyana, Ladyana Halbert is one of the first. She's holding her son Kingsley, contemplates meal prep for March 9th when she first discovered, uh, that like she was pregnant. And what's crazy is she like refers to her son as her abort, like her, her lack of abortion or like her. She's like, she was like her saying, denied abortion. Yeah. You saw yeah. This, this is her denied abortion. So she refers to her son as a denied abortion. Now, when you can get like, this is obviously both a female and a black issue right here together. But when you can get like a woman living out her most maternal and natural instinct of like actually having a kid and get her to like dehumanize her own son and to view him as just a lack of like access to killing. Like, you can hold a kid and be like, Ugh, you're my denied abortion. You can tell that there's some serious brainwashing that has gone on over the decades that has been very successful when you can get a human being to, to be this callous, this cold, and to view their own offspring, their own offspring. Like this, I, 10 out of 10, this woman would be mad if I called her the N-word, but would also then get mad at me that I didn't give her access to kill her own son. Like, you, you know, the backwards nature of that, you're mad about a word but you're also mad that I wouldn't give you the power to kill your kid. Maybe racism is still alive and you just are misguided. Yeah. I'm really hoping that like, I did see this story um, at the same time you did. And I'm really hoping she's the exception and not the rule. People were citing a study below this article saying that uh, something like 95% of mothers who are turned away for abortion 
end up not regretting having their child. So hopefully this woman is the exception. And it's, it's just, it's weird to me because there are so many resources available to people who end up with unplanned pregnancies, most of which are offered by pro-life organizations. And that's not something that the media is willing to cover. Yeah. Yeah. But also as, as a new father myself, I love my son, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell everyone this, have kids and have them earlier. Um, although like, I feel like I'm at a pretty good age. Like I just turned 30 and I have my first kid. My wife's a lot younger than me. Um, so that's really nice too. So she's got a lot of, a lot of years, but we're already thinking like, man, we should probably should have started having kids like 20, like early twenties because, um, the reality is, is life changes and everyone's like, but it changes. Yeah. But it changes its purpose. Like, it's not like you're just like sitting around and you've been like, how many more Netflixes do you want to binge watch? How many more, you know? nights out partying do you want and it's like well a lot yeah well maybe because you don't have purpose maybe because you're just at home and you don't know what you're doing with your life but when you see a little a little you and by the way he looks just like me it's really awesome um like we like poor him though genetic lottery but cool me because i love i love seeing my little offspring he gives me purpose in life and gives me direction and it helps me to make better choices to be healthier and to live live my life uh, in a way that I'm, that I can be proud of, right. Where I was a little more lost, aimless. And through this pregnancy, I was able to give my life back to God and start really working on like aligning my heart with the, 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 the values that I know are true. And it's like, he's set my life on a good direction and no one understands how important that's what kids help you to wake up a little bit. You know, they help you to get focused and to really be there and to just view kids as like a side hustle that you you know, get rid of when you don't want and get, and take them when you do. I just feel bad for these kids. Poor little Kingsley. You know what I mean? Poor little dude. It just yeah. Yeah, it breaks my I'm heart. glad that you're, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're preaching something positive about uh, fatherhood and parenthood in general. The sad thing is, I think it's not that young people are necessarily delaying having kids because they don't want to, or they're trying to find themselves or all of this ridiculous, uh, nonsense like it's not voluntary they're delaying having kids because they feel like they can't or that they don't have the option available to them to build families and there are a lot of factors uh that make it so it's much more difficult for people to start families and sustain them on one income these days the society is not built to facilitate uh marriage and family life anymore and I don't want people to like if, if, if there's someone out there who doesn't want to have kids because they don't believe that it's in their nature, or they just feel like their personality isn't built for that. That's that's one thing. But I think most people are uh, delaying starting families because they feel disempowered and that's scarier. Absolutely. It is. It is overwhelming on that. And guys, uh, I want to let you know that the last uh, 10 minutes of the show, we're going to be uh, finishing up on. Uh, rumble. Um, I do have to be at the, the show's early today because I'm leaving right now on a flight in a second to go to my sister's wedding, which is very awesome. Yes. It's very cool. Um, and, uh, and so that's the case. I also Friday, we will not have a live stream, but I have a special video that I'm releasing for you guys. But before we jump over to rumble and we finish the show off there, can you tell people uh, where they can follow you, how they can get uh, a hold of your show, get more of your commentary? Uh, let me know. Yeah, definitely. So you can find me on a show on Timcast's network. It's called Pop Culture Crisis. We go live on YouTube every Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. We talk about uh, movies. We review uh, new TV shows, movies. We dunk on celebrities. We talk about the wokeness that's in the entertainment industry. And uh, we have a lot of fun over there. And if you super chat, you can actually like shoot money at us with money guns. That's one of the fun uh, things about the show. And if you want to follow me on my personal social media, they're both uh, Instagram and Twitter at Mary Archived. Mary Archived. All right, guys, head over rumble.com slash slightly offensive. You can send super chats there as well. We'll see you in a second. <laughs>